This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting Sales EQ, Objections and Inked, and I'm here to help you fill up your pipeline, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. On this episode of Sales Gravy, we're going to be exploring the new paradigm of sales and marketing and what your role is as a sales professional, and some of what you're going to hear is going to surprise you. Joining me is Daryl Prell, who is my good friend and the chief marketing officer for VanillaSoft. We'll get started in just a moment. Because you listen to this podcast, I know that you're an individual that likes to invest in yourself. And maybe you have an entire team and you're trying to help your team get better at selling so that you can crush your number. Well, if you're one of these people, go to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com and check out all of our online courses. We have courses for individuals and for entire teams. And because you're a listener, you can take advantage of this podcast only offer that gets you 50% off on any course and any subscription. Just use coupon code GRAVY123. That's coupon code GRAVY123 when you check out to save 50%. Go to learn.salesgravy.com. Now here's my conversation with Daryl Prell, the CMO at VanillaSoft, on the role that you should be playing as a sales professional when working with marketing. I'm Jeff Blunt, CEO of Sales Gravy, author of the brand new book, Inked. Welcome to another episode of Sales Masters. I'm here with Daryl Prell from VanillaSoft, one of my favorite software programs for prospecting and engaging hard-to-reach prospects. Daryl, welcome to the show. Jeb, it is a thrill to be here. Nice to see you. By the way, the book is awesome. Just want to get that out of the way. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So um, we've got a couple of things to talk about. First of all, um, let's let's just get a little bit of your background. So where you came from, how you ended up at at, uh, at VanillaSoft, and and then I want to shift into a quick conversation about the Outbound Conference because you are our title sponsor, and I want to talk about why you chose Outbound and what you're expecting to get from the conference. But first, just tell me a little bit about your background and how you ended up where you are. No problem. Quick and dirty. I am that that anomaly, that odd person who began life as a computer programmer and then got bored and went from computer programming to become a sales engineer where I first got my exposure to sales. Now, I should back up, though. My first job out of school was selling photocopiers door to door, and I did that for six months. That was hard. That's when I went back into development. Became a sales engineer, that went to product management, that went to product marketing, that went to marketing, boom. Then I was doing sales, I was doing marketing, I did both jobs, grew, became a CMO, grew to became a VP of sales, multiple companies, and ultimately settled on the marketing gig because it's nice not having a quota over your head. That's my history. I love that. You know, I went kind of the opposite way. I went into operations, then went into marketing, and then ended up uh, in sales, the other the other side of it, uh, because I got so jealous of all the salespeople getting all the awards and making all the money. But, you know, but but selling copiers, that is a tough job. It sucked. I mean, it's so tough because you're going door to door. You're dealing with these guys who are just mom and pop, you know, the mechanic and the HVAC guy, and they're greasy, and you're interrupting their day, and you're taking them away from their, you know, their time is money for these people. So you you learn quickly to deal with rejection, to what was your opening pitch, to not, you know, scream sales rep from a million miles away, and to connect with them. Talk about it was, it was a master class in human relations and dynamics. You know, I started off my career doing the same thing. I wasn't doing copiers, but I was, uh, I sold um, industrial uniforms, really, really sexy. And I remember like walking up to some of those doors and people would see you walking across the parking lot and you look like a salesperson. And then you could see them scurrying to hide from you. They're all like running away as fast as they can because you're coming in. But in, those are like, those are tough days, but you're exactly right. What you learn how to do is think on your feet and you learn how to deal with people and you learn how to deal with rejection and for most salespeople who go through that process, it just makes them so much better uh, when they move on to bigger and better jobs. And typically in those type of roles, you're getting trained to do something else down the road. Um, so, so now you're a CMO and, and real quickly, just what do you like the most about being a CMO for a big bad software company like VanillaSoft? Oh my gosh. So 
True story. Uh, when I was in high school and college, I was a professional chess player. I know I'm lame. I'm sorry. But what was cool about that was you have all the pieces on the board and everything does something a little bit different. And when you move them in the right combination of, of, of steps, you conquer the, the opposing team. For me, that's what marketing is. I've got pay per click. I've got events. I've got podcasts. I got webinars. I got email. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got. I mean, I move all the pieces on the board right then I have success. It's not unlike navigating a sale in many ways. You got different tactics and tools you can use, always trying to get to that end game. And that's what I like about marketing. I got budget, I got people, and I got a chance to do what I do very well. And you're creative. I mean, the thing that I love about you the most is just how creative you are. I see you everywhere. You're always on social media. You're doing something different. Um, even, you know, even this amazing studio that you have and the software that you're running your studio on, you know, really, you know, badass stuff that, um, that, you know, you know, it's like, there's something about you that sort of gets that. And I think it's your sales background, because you're not just sitting back behind the curtain, you're out in front, and you're leading from the front. And that's got to be something that your salespeople love to see, because they know that you're working for them, trying to generate more leads and trying to bring in people who know who Vanilla Soft is, so that their demos and the sales process goes even better. Well, what the sales guys have shared with me, they like, and they like to pick on me. They like to mock my gray hair and mock my videos and everything else. But what they like is that I understand their pain. I understand their issue. I understand what they need to be successful because that's where I was. And what I love about being a CMO at a sales engagement tool like VanillaSoft is that's my tribe. That's my audience. The chance to connect with these people who are kindred spirits, who are just struggling to hit quota, hit their activity numbers, to have enough conversations, to contribute to the pipeline. And maybe at the end of the day, go to President's Club and I can help. Man, that's, it's not just, you're not just marketing a tool. You're actually marketing an outcome, a lifestyle. You're making that difference in people's lives. I know it sounds cliche. I know it's bad, but I love it. I love that about it. I'm not selling with all due respect uniforms. Well, I think, you know, I think that from, for me, that makes, it means a lot to me personally, but I think that's super important because sales and marketing are more mashed up today than they've ever been before. And when the CMO really understands what the salespeople are going through and the, 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 and, the and can go stand in their shoes, I, I, I think that it, A, it generates a lot of respect from the sales team, but it also helps you help them and you, you have empathy for their situation. And there's a whole lot of people in marketing that really have never had that experience. They've never made a cold call. They've never been rejected at that level. They've never been, you know, going through a demo or standing in front of a customer or giving a presentation and they've got marketing, you know, material that doesn't really support the message that they're trying to deliver. And by having someone who has stepped and or lived in their shoes, it makes it so much better to them for them. And it, by the way, makes, you know, makes you a, a much better marketer. And with that, my question for you is, is especially around sales and marketing. So there's a lot of noise that comes and goes from time to time. Um, and the, some people call it schmarketing, which is the, a really weird word. But there, there is more of a mashup and more of a connection between sales and marketing than there ever has been before. And I'm just, I'm just curious from your standpoint, talking to salespeople, what should be the modern salesperson's role when they're from a marketing standpoint, uh, helping their marketing department do a better job of bringing in more leads or getting the message out or building the brand, how does salespeople, through the work that they do every single day, support you and other people in your position? Okay, so not everybody's going to like this answer because it's going to make you uncomfortable. You all need to be me to a degree. So here, you need to be Jeb. You need to be your own brand with your own take and your own opinion, adding value to the conversation. If you do that, your customers, your potential customers will see what you're doing and will be attracted to you and they will want to transact business to you because that means you're going to add value, not just in the sale, but long term. You need to have an opinion but even more so if you do that you're gonna be visible on social gonna be visible at events and you're gonna draw people into in my case vanilla soft into your company because they equate you to the company the one thing i hear over and over again if you need proof on that is i hear people say daryl vanilla soft is you you are vanilla soft and i'm okay with that 
And you should be doing the same thing if you're in sales. You do that, your marketers are going to love you because they're going to feel right now that they're the only ones out there, you know, trumpeting the company horn, trying to draw people in, top of funnel leads, inbound leads. They need you to do that. Do that. And you're going to like kick ass marketing's going to love you. But here's the, something that's even more important that we never talk about. That's really critical along the way. You're positioning yourself for long-term career success. There is no guarantee you're going to be with your employer three years from now. You may find yourself, you know, the victim of an acquisition where they lay you off, not because you didn't perform, but just because that was the way the deal was structured. What do you do when you look for that next deal? If you didn't build your personal brand now, you're going to be screwed then. So help yourself, help marketing, build your brand, make some noise, have a take and sit back and watch the leads flow in. So uh, the brilliant advice. And, and, and this is for the, all the salespeople out there. So a couple of things. So you have to be part of the brand. And, and the, the way that social media works today, especially, uh, it allows you to do that in really unique ways that we just didn't have the ability to do before. If, if you struggle with that, really, one of the easiest things that you can do is just curate content. So your organization has a blog, they put out videos, they have all kinds of material that you can then post or repost that is both insight and sometimes just pure marketing. And you should get into a cadence of every single day, making sure that you're putting something up. And it's one of the basic things that I ask of my team. And I know exactly what you're talking about, Daryl, because sometimes I feel like I've got this company, Sales Gravy, we're a big training company, and that sometimes I feel I'm the only voice because I'm I'm basically the CMO. Even I'm the CEO of the company. I'm kind of the CMO as well. And I'm out there, you know, talking about us and and being the face of the brand. And I just like you, I so want other people to join in the party. And the easiest, fastest thing that you can do is that you can just repost or curate the information that, that folks like Daryl are already creating. And I also think, and it, exactly what you said, it's a long-term brand strategy for you. It's also important that you start thinking about how can you create some original content. And one of the, the pieces of advice I would give you is go to your marketing department, ask them. I see so many marketing departments that are so progressive today and they've got the equipment and they will sit down with you. You can be on the podcast. They'll, they'll shoot videos with you. We encourage that at Sales Gravy. So you'll see videos from my different trainers. We, I send my crew out with them. To, to create more original content so that I can bolster their brand and, you know, and make them, make them shine as bright as all the stars in the sky that we have around us. I want that for my people as well. But you have to take the initiative. You can't sit around and wait for people to do it for you. And, and, I, and just from, from what, what Daryl said, you've got to build your own personal brand. And there's one important piece of this, and that's something called familiarity. And familiarity is like prospecting lubrication. So the more people are familiar with you, the more likely they are to engage. And to get to create that familiarity takes a lot of touches. Part of those touches need to be people seeing you doing things that are not just you trying to get them to engage with you. So they need to be able to see you and, and, uh, and your name and, um, and your, your image and the things that you're posting and doing out there. Because then when you reach out to them, they're much more likely to pick up the phone and call you back or to say, let's set a meeting or to at least give you a moment so that you can sit down with them and figure out whether they're qualified. I love it. I love everything you're saying. And I guess what I would tell you, sales reps out there, you're freaking, I said you may not find this comfortable. It's because the idea of being public is scary. You know what? It's no more scary than picking up a phone and you do that every single day and you talk to strangers and you know you've got like seven to 12 seconds to engage them and yet you embrace that. This is the same thing. Do that. Do yourself a favor. Now, I'll tell you one more thing you can do. Think like a marketer, okay? I'm saying this being both X sales and X marketing. Oh, currently marketing. But here's the point. I had this conversation with someone today saying, I need more leads. What do I do? And I said, well, what would your marketing department do? They would probably maybe, I don't know, throw a webinar. I'm, I'm throwing an idea out there. Like, yeah, sure. I said, throw your own webinar. Just go have a Zoom meeting. Go invite 10 prospects and say, I'm doing an intimate, intimate one-on-one -on -one where we're talking about this issue. And it's going to be a roundtable conversation. I'm going to give you the advice. We'll share. Boom. Done. That's it. Do it. And they were like, wow, I never thought of that. 
that's a marketing a marketing tactic that you can repurpose for your own advantage. That make your own content and share it with people one on one and call out certain paragraphs to say, when I wrote this, I had you in mind. If you read nothing else, read this. Trust me, that will generate content and reactions and opportunities that you're not getting now. Think like a marketer, sell like a sales rep, promote like a Hollywood rock star or Jeb Blunt, your choice, and you will be successful. It's, it's funny you say that because uh, last night I was on a pipeline call with the training and consulting team. And uh, in the training and consulting team, they're out working with clients every single day. And mostly what we want them doing is what would be traditional account management. It's just expanding the relationship. So, you know, my sales team is landing them. We want these guys to expand and renew the relationships. Keith Lubner, who is my executive vice president and head of training and consulting, was having exactly that conversation, Daryl. He was saying, you guys need to be creating more original content. You need to be reaching out to your clients and even clients that aren't currently engaged with us and, and, and wrapping them into programs where you're engaging, having conversations with them, talking to them, bringing, in, bringing them in. And, and the more original content that you can create, the more that people are gonna be attracted to you and the more leads you're gonna get, which is gonna boost your income. And, and if you're a trainer, you know, the, if you don't have training days or if you don't have clients who are engaging you, if you're a consultant and you're not billing for hours or billing for days, you're not making any money. So it's in your best interest to do that a little bit at a time. And you know, one of the messages for this particular team, and I think this is important for people who are listening to this or watching this, is it's not saying to them, you need to go spend you know, four hours of your day doing this. You just need to do a little bit every single day. The cumulative impact, for example, of an account manager spending 30 minutes a day just focusing on a little bit of marketing, a little bit of outreach, the cumulative impact over time, over many days at a time, is massive. And what'll happen is you'll start seeing people calling you. They'll be reaching out to you and saying, hey, what's going on, what's happening? And by the way, we see that every single day with our trainers when, you know, a trainer, when this is just like, you know, human nature, but when one of our trainers has a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a lull, they'll start working again. And as soon as that happens, what, you know, what, what, what happens is they start filling up their pipeline and they start closing some business. So if you're listening to this, think about like, what do you do every single morning? And not just, Daryl, take a, a page out of my book. Um, I'm pretty active on social media. I've got a pretty big platform but I typically only spend about 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn and I'm doing that early in the morning. So if you see things that I'm posting in the morning, those are things that I'm posting myself. Anything that you see later on, I'm using a robot to do that work. Um, the stuff that I do myself gets way more engagement than what the robot does, but I don't have to spend my entire day doing this. I just spend a little bit of my day doing this. So the one thing I want to really emphasize, you notice what we're doing here, Jeb and I are emphasizing each other's words. He made a point. He said the cumulative impact. Okay, the difference between sales and marketing often is, is simply horizon, timelines, all right? Sales want a deal now. They got to, you know, this month, this quarter to get a deal done. Marketing plays the much longer game. Jeb talked about the cumulative impact. That's the whole point is that you're actually doing this, not necessarily to harvest you, what you're, you're planting this month or this quarter, but you will harvest it this year sometimes. So you got to have some patience as you do what he talks about, which is playing that long game, creating that content, creating that engagement. If you do that and you manage your expectations accordingly, you're going to be set for success and your pipeline is going to run it over and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to be awesome. Tremendous advice. So let's switch gears for just a moment and we're gonna come back to outbound. Don't worry, I'm coming back to that. Um, and let's talk about um, prospecting sequences. So as you start thinking, thinking about playing the long game, uh, Vanilla Soft is an amazing suite of software. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I, I love it when clients use Vanilla Soft and they, they need to build out cadences and sequences. And often they're engaging my team when they need help with messaging. So. They need, say, you know, six emails in a particular sequence or a number of voicemails in a sequence or some, some, some form of messaging that, that, that they know is going to connect with prospects. Sequencing in a way or cadences in a way, sales engagement in a way is playing the long game. 
there's always a certain number of prospects that you're going to be able to pull out of a sequence really quickly. You're going to get engagement right up front. If you, if you lead with a phone call, in a lot of cases, you can call, say, a list of 50 prospects that you're running through a sequence. You can get five or 10 of them on the telephone and have a conversation, and they never even have to finish the sequence. Um, but I see salespeople sometimes getting um, impatient with, with running sequences um, because there's a certain number of prospects that just don't engage the first time. And my advice to them, Daryl, is always, look, look you got to put them away, and then you're going to come back 90 days later, you're going to come back 60 days later, and you're going to run that sequence again. You have to make sure that you've got the right number of touches and the right timing on those touches. Those things matter. And some of that's a little bit of testing. There's no perfect science for that. But there's a certain number of prospects that it might take two years, three years, four years, or even five years for them to ever engage with you um, because the time's not right or that you missed the message or whatever the case may be. And I see that type of impatience. And I'm wondering um, if you see that on your end as well. And if you do, what type of advice do you give salespeople um, when they're when they're building out their sequences to keep their mindset right and think I'm playing the long game. So we see it all the time. And, you know, my advice to you is, again, I said this before, think like a marketer. What do marketers do uh, when they're actually doing, you know, uh, shall we say corporate nurtures as opposed to one on one sales rep prospect nurtures? When they're in corporate nurtures, they do just that. Oh, you filled out a web form? No problem. Here's my six email nurture over the course of two weeks. And then I don't hear from you. I'm going to come back to you in three months' time. I don't hear from you. Come back to me in six months' time. Don't hear you. Hear from you. Come back in a, in a year, whatever it might be. That's what they do. And the beauty of this approach is they just set it up and essentially forget it. Now that's where marketers drop the ball. They forget it. It comes back and it happens, it's auto-triggered, but there's nothing personalized about it. This is the opportunity for sales reps. You gotta have patience. I can't make that person sell, I'm sorry, buy faster. But, and it's, yeah, remember, it's a classic, you know, out of sight, out of mind. So yeah, you are pinging them with a uh, 12 uh, touch you know, cadence over 35 days, you know, two months ago, but now they've forgotten about you because life happens. It happens to you. It happens to me. And, but suddenly they have a need. If you're not front and center, if you're not just periodically dropping in, you're never going to get that business. And you know, you can't get the business if you don't, if you're not there to take the shot, you know what I'm saying? So you got to take the shot and that's where you got to play the game. Cause what would you rather do? Be impatient and angry and frustrated that you didn't get the business up front and walk away and never get that business or set up the cadences to automatically prompt and remind you, oh, it's time to ping Johnny, who I've not pinged in six months. And this is the, hey, I haven't talked to you in six months cadence now. And away we go because maybe they're ready to buy now. The tool is going to help you do that. Leverage the tool. Invest the time up front to set up the cadences you want with the right messaging. Jeb's got incredible content and advice. His whole team's amazing. They can help you with that. And then let the tool guide you. When it comes up, it's your turn again. Just trust in the tool. That said, I will tell you this. When it comes to cadence, too many people blindly rely upon the tool. Think of the tool as nothing more than a reminder. And it's crafted three quarters of your email or it's giving you a sample script if you get on the voice call. It's still up to you to personalize it, make it relevant, make it make that connection with the recipient. If you don't do that, then you're going to get out of it what you put into it, which in that case was pretty much nothing. I love what you said there. So, so first of all, if I can paraphrase, sales is human. It's human to human. It's person to person. The software tools, one of the key things they do is remember stuff that you don't have to. So they do a lot of the brain work for you and they can get some of those things out of the way. They also make it easy because they set up the, the process and you can run the process and that allows you to focus on being a human being. If you're just as much as a robot as the robot, you're going to get the exact same result as the robot gets. So you want to use the machine, the robot, the software to do the, the work that that doesn't really it's not really in you know what what the human mind is capable of doing so that you can interact with people at the emotional level and connect with them the other thing that i i i think we should talk about is in fact we, we're going to take a moment and go to church is faith um but and I be, i'm a big believer in faith especially when it comes to pipeline prospecting every day every day every day in some format every day a little bit every single day over time pays off 
I have deep faith in that. So for me, if the bottom fell out of my business tomorrow and I was on the street and I was starting all over, I know that I could pick up a phone, use email, use social, use any, any way, go knock on doors, and I could build a business again because I have faith that over time, if I make enough touches, that I'm going to engage some prospects. And once I get those prospects in, I'll sell them. Um, I'll get an anchor prospect. I'll get something, and then I'll build another one from there. And I think a lot of salespeople, and, and, and probably even marketers to some, to some extent, they, they lack that level of faith. They're expecting that prospecting is quid pro quo. In other words, I, I do something a day and I immediately get something back, not thinking that over time, over time, I'm creating familiarity, I'm building my story. And previously on a podcast that you're going to listen to because we had a really cool podcast, Daryl and I, uh, but we were talking about voicemail and how people say, well, why would you use voicemail? Nobody listens to voicemail. But the truth is people do listen to voicemail and they read voicemail. And think about if, if you're in your cadence, you have, say, five messages that you're going to leave. And each of those messages, those 30-second messages, tells a part of the story. And that story begins to connect with them. And so you tell the story, and then and maybe they don't engage, but you come back and you do it again. And then you do it again, then you do it again, then you do it again. And then one day, they've got a problem. They heard your voicemail message. They see Daryl on LinkedIn on a, uh, on a, a webinar. And suddenly they're thinking vanilla soft. I need to talk to vanilla soft right now because I've got a problem. My pipeline is dry. My salespeople are having a hard time and this software can change what we do. That's how it works. It doesn't work just because you made one call and then you forgot about it. So as a, as a salesperson, begin with faith. If you do the right things every single day, Every day, every day, every day, every day, it absolutely will pay off. I promise you, guaranteed. And I know this to be true, not just in my heart, but in my business and in the businesses of, you know, of thousands and thousands of companies across the globe and of ultra high performing salespeople who every single day are able to leverage these type of, of tools and cadences and sequences to build big pipelines that generate a lot of income from themselves and their company. You said it best, man. That's a mic drop. Boom. Truth bomb. Boom. Every hashtag you can think of, you just did it. Nicely done. We're done. Good. Well, let's talk about outbound. So, so, so you're the CMO of VanillaSoft, and and I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna tell you the truth, okay? So, and and this is gonna get me in trouble because I'm saying this, but but you're the best freaking sponsor ever. Like, I, you know, it's a for, we 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 because of the way we built this this conference and our you know our desire to really help salespeople. First of all, you know, I love Vanilla Soft. It is a killer program. It's a program that any company can use to get better, to build pipe. Uh, it's fantastic. So first of all, we got a great software program that I know I feel good about telling people about that are coming to Outbound. But we wanted a sponsor like you that really understood why we were doing Outbound and what it means um, to to work hard to advance sales as a profession. And, um, and I'm just, I'm curious from your standpoint, because that's, that's my standpoint, that's how I see it. And by the way, when I'm talking to Anthony and Mark and, and uh, Victor, we, I mean, we just gush over, over Vanilla Soft and Daryl. Um, why did you choose Outbound? Like, what was it about Outbound as a CMO that caught your attention? And, and what do you, as Vanilla Soft, the company, and you, Daryl, ex what are you expecting to get from the conference? Oh my gosh, there's a loaded question. Okay, so why do we do it and what do we want to get from the conference? I'll tell you why we did it. So VanillaSoft as a corporation, as a company, as an entity, has ever since our beginning been all about supporting and helping the community. If you are successful, we will go with you. And to your point, we have faith in that. So it's a long-term play in investing in the community. Hence, Outbound is not a vendor a conference. It's not a show being put on by a wannabe unicorn. It's not a, you know, an investor darling. It is a show by practitioners for practitioners with quote unquote, no pitching. So the conference, the event just resonated with us and what we are about and what our DNA is. That's the first part. Selfishly, what do I want to get out of it? I totally wanted to hang out with Jeb Blunt. That's number one. Beyond everybody else is irrelevant. But if I have to talk to other people, right now at last count, there's 18 world 
class speakers that are at this event. And candidly, the chance for me to leverage our title sponsorship into doing content with them on whether it's a podcast or a webinar or a live stream or a blog or a white paper that we can do collaboratively together and give to our community, give to our prospects. It's, 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 it's incredible. Like I would never get this otherwise. And if you want, I mentioned, I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, you know, an example was reaching someone like Jeb. Jeb is so busy for him and I to have this conversation took a lot of coordination. Well, guess what? Every single other speaker there at that event is similarly in demand for me to reach out to them and try to connect. We'll connect eventually. It might take me six months or a year, but we'll get there eventually. Whereas being a title sponsor gives me a little more influence, a little more prioritization, and that allows me to bring the content and the awareness and the excitement of the event and the content to the community. And in the end, that's why we're doing it. We just want the community to know about the Vanilla Soft brand. After that, we ain't pitching. We trust your big boys and girls. You'll make a decision that's right for you. And hopefully along the way, that includes a short list that includes Vanilla Soft. Awesome. And look, if you haven't been to Outbound, it is the greatest sales show on earth. It is an event like none other. You've never been to a conference like this before. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Daryl, so we're going to have 18 speakers. And uh, right behind me, these are our, uh, our badges. So um, these are the tickets that are available. The Elite badge is sold out. So if you wanted the Elite badge, I'm sorry, they're gone. Um, this is the main event badge. Uh, this is uh, the number one badge. This is the show. And this badge will get you uh, to the main stage. You get to meet Daryl. You get to hang out with me. You'll meet all the speakers. You get this rockin' swag bag. Uh, these tickets are available. I suggest buy them in bulk. Uh, you can save some money. Uh, buy them for your entire team. And if you really, really, really want to have an experience of a lifetime, it's this badge right here. This is the VIP badge. And the VIP badge gets you four days. It gets you to in the VIP experience. Uh, it gets you, which is a mastermind group with, that all the, the core speakers will be in. Uh, it will get you upfront seating. So in the splash zone. So you'll get to see the, uh, the speakers up front. You'll get uh, uh, the, the best swag bag ever. So we just fill this thing up with an incredible gear, a private book signing, uh, and, uh, and you'll be one of only 50 people walking around with the black badge. And trust me, when you put this on, it makes you feel awesome. I, I love my VIP, VIP badge. badge. This year's theme, by the way, is play to win. And, you know, we'll be, we'll be starting off. In fact, I'll be the first keynote of the, of the conference. And my focus for the keynote is going to be on uh, MLP strategy, which is motivation, leverage, and power, and how you can use motivation, leverage, and power from the get-go, from the very moment that you engage a prospect to in improve win probability and bend win probability in your favor so that you win and close more deals. I, that is a brilliant way to actually kick it off. I love the theme, the theme play to win. That's exactly how we play here. We play all out. We don't hold back and we are playing to win, you know, and we're going to strike out sometimes, which is why I love your comment about have faith because it's like, you know, whether it's baseball or hockey, the law of averages says, I'm going to eventually going to, you know, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to get on base. I'm going to get that goal. Have faith, do it right. I love it. Play to win. That's a fantastic theme. Very good. So let's let's stop and uh, because I love vanilla soft so much and give me a short commercial for vanilla soft. And what I'm looking for is if people are interested in learning more about how they can use a tool like vanilla soft, especially around sequencing and prospecting. So so engaging more prospects, getting more and better prospects, more targeted, qualified prospects in the pipeline and then moving them through the pipeline. Um, Tell us how they can learn more about Vanilla Soft, uh, and if there's a company out there that wants to set up a demo or do a trial or what have you, what would they need to do to, to, to do that? All right, so Vanilla Soft, as Jeb has talked about, is a sales engagement platform. We would, I have no problem telling you who I compete with. I would compete with vendors like a sales loft or an outreach. And then if you, if you just do an email only, maybe an auto close or a mix max, it's a bit of a crowded space. It's the hottest space literally in enterprise software right now. The only thing still hotter is CRM. That's how critical it is and what a game changer it is. The whole premise is using a platform like Vanilla Soft, we're going to have your sales reps uh, just hand hammering prospects with the right sequence 
uh, the right touches with the right message and the right volume so that you are literally tripling your engagement and your ultimate pipeline, tripling without hiring a single additional person. Why? Because right now, most people who live in CRM are make, making two to three call attempts per prospect and they give up. 48% of marketing generated leads are never touched. It takes a day and a half to three days before a web lead or a buyer intent signal is actually even contacted. That goes out the window when you use a tool like VanillaSoft. We have this dynamic queue that serves you the next best lead. So it might be that next lead in that cadence or boom, someone filled out your form that gets to the front of the line. That's who you're calling out or boom. Someone went to G2, checked you out. That's now the front of the line. It's always serving you the next best lead. And in industries where time to you know, speed to lead, how fast can I get a hold of that person? That's essential. That's what we do. That's who we compete with. That's why you should care. If you want to learn more, just go to VanillaSoft.com. There is a free trial, VanillaSoft.com slash free dash trial. One of the really cool things about us versus anybody else, get this, get this, get this, month to month, no annual contracts, unless, of course, you want to save money, month to month. So if you want to put your toe in the water and decide it's not for you, month to month, you're out. That's cool. If you want to learn more, you want to talk to me or anybody here, just go to VanillaSoft.com. There's a contact us page. But better yet, faster response probably. I dare you to, 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 to measure the speed difference. Reach out to me on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. And I bet you I respond faster than my sales reps do. And they're using VanillaSoft. Awesome. And, and what's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle, you're going to love this one. It's opinionated. And I'll spell it for you because it's funky. It's O-H-P-I-N-I-O-N, the number eight, T-E-D, opinionated. Awesome. And then Daryl Prell on LinkedIn, you see him everywhere. He's all over the place. And, uh, and go check out VanillaSoft. One of the reasons why we recommend VanillaSoft to our clients is exactly what you said. It's month to month. So we don't have our small and mid-sized businesses who are running with their hair on fire, worrying about these long-term contracts that um, some of your competitors lock people into. And then a whole bunch of lawyers come out of the woodwork when they're ready to leave. And VanillaSoft doesn't do that. It's transparent. It's clean. And I promise you that VanillaSoft will triple the size of your pipeline. will make you more money. Uh, Daryl, thank you so much for being with me today on Sales Masters. I can't wait to see you at Outbound. Uh, I love your energy. You are a rock star, and uh, and this is going to be so much fun. I, I will see you there, my friend. May, Atlanta. I My ticket's booked.